In this presentation, we will discuss forecasting. Many of the tools that we've taken a look at so far, breaking out the variable cost, the fixed cost, the contract. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Contribution margin, the contribution margin per unit, the contribution margin ratio are very useful for the skill of forecasting. Once we have this all set up, once we have the fixed costs, once we have the variable costs, once we can break this down to a fixed cost, variable cost per unit contribution margin, then we can do a lot of forecasting very easily. In other words, we could set this system up and put it into an Excel worksheet, and we can then make projections with very limited amount of adjustments to that worksheet. In other words, we can project, for example, what our sales volume is going to be increasing and decreasing and let the worksheet basically make the adjustments for us given the fact that we've put into our sheet the idea of fixed costs and variable costs and since it's in the system by behavior we can then let the worksheet do the forecasting work for us and this is very useful when we start to think about okay what, what happens if we do this in the future what happens if we sell more what happens if we sell less what happens if we want to adjust something like our advertising budget? We think that's going to increase uh, more here and less here. In other words, fixed costs uh, possibly going up and then maybe we're going to sell more as a result of that. All these type of scenario type of analysis, a lot easier to do uh, once we have this information down. So once we have this information in the format of a CVP type of analysis in the format of a contribution margin type of income statement. Here's gonna be our information. Note that if you're talking about problems, they're often gonna have the current information and then the future information. Note that when we're thinking about uh, how to break this information down, we're gonna have the financial statements which are always built on something in the past. So we got the past financial statements, then we're typically taking that information and projecting into the future. That's usually where we think about the CVP analysis. Now note that anytime we do that, we th we're gonna take the past information into consideration. The past is what we have to go on to project into the future. But also note that the past information is not all that we have to go on. So we can't just take the past information, project it forward. So when you take a look at book problems, they're gonna emphasize that a lot and they may actually give you the past information, the future information. And just note that we're gonna have to make that adjustment in the book problem and in real life. In a book problem, you're gonna have to know that uh, if you're talking about a forecasting problem, then of course you're gonna take the estimates in the future to do your forecasting estimates, which will be slightly different than the past information from uh, the prior year. Obviously in real life to forecast into the future, you're gonna start with the prior year information and then do any kind of thought experiments you can have to think about how you're gonna adjust that into the future. Or is the price gonna go up? What's gonna happen? And if the price goes up, then possibly you sell a little less. Maybe you're gonna increase the price and sell less, or maybe you're gonna increase advertising and the volume will change. So these, these type of adjustments, of course, will be taking prior year numbers, and then making the adjustments with it. So this is the current year sales and the current year variable cost. And then we have here the fixed costs. Now these may be very similar from year to year because they're fixed, like the rent is the rent, typically gonna be pretty similar from year to year. Then we have the estimated sales in units this is the thing that we're typically going to change so when when we we're thinking about the future we're often going to be changing the the sales units and that's the thing that we're going to we want this to be set up so that i can basically change this sales units number and the whole worksheet will recalculate for us give us a new net profit number because of the ease of it to do so because of the breaking out between the variable cost and the fixed costs then we have the estimated sales price and the estimated variable costs Per unit so if we consider our contribution margin income statement type format for our forecasting this is our forecasting uh, contribution margin income statement we have the sales so the sales are going to be in units we've got the four that 40,800 units 
and that's going to be our projected units that we're going to sell. We're going to sell them for $208, so 208 per unit. 40,800 times 208 is going to give us the 8,486,400. Next, we're going to have the variable costs. So again, we're going to take the same 40,800 units, multiply that times the variable cost uh, per unit. And again, we're going to know that because we're breaking that out in our CVP analysis. And we're going to say that the variable cost per unit are the 148. If we multiply the 40,800 times the 148, we get the 6,038,400. .38 then we can have the contribution margin, which once again, we can do this two ways now, the contribution margin. We can take the 40,800 in units, multiply it times the contribution margin per unit, the 208 minus the 148 or the 60. So 40,800 times 60, 2,448,000. Or we could take the total sales minus the variable cost, the 2,448,000. So we kind of double check our number in this, in this way. The next item will be the fixed costs. And notice we're not taking now the 40,800 because the fixed costs don't matter. It doesn't matter how many units we make. They're fixed. That's the point. So the fixed cost is going to go right over to the end. We're going to say uh, 638. It is what it is. It's fixed. And therefore, we just keep that as is. Then we've got the income before taxes, which is going to be the contribution margin, the 2,448,000 uh, minus the 638,000 or the 1,810,000. Then we would calculate the tax and we're just going to say the tax is uh, 633.5 and that'll give us the net income. So that's going to be our base calculation. Now, of course, when we think about our forecasting, then this would be basically a static set. We're going to say there's 40,800. That's how many units we're going to make. Now, if we were using just a normal type of income statement and budgeting it out, then it would be a lot of work for us to do that with one set income number. But in this setup, we could say, well, what would happen? if we made you know different levels of units that were sold what would happen if we sold 30,000 what happens if we sold 50 60 70 we can make that adjustment very easily by just by just changing this top part the bottom part is going to stay the same because it's fixed in other words the fixed cost won't change and these will change at a constant rate that's why we broke it out between fixed and variable cost so for example, if we change this number to 60,000, we're going to say, all right, now the units are 60, the variable 60, the contribution margin is 60. If we had an Excel worksheet, we would just say that these items are going to be pulling from that cell. And so that would happen automatically. So you can see we can just change this one number. It'll then multiply out in this format. These numbers will change automatically by just changing one cell in essence. And, and then it'll basically be able to recalculate the whole thing. So 60,000 times the 208, 60,000 times the 148, 60,000 times 60. And in essence, we've got the 3,600 contribution margins minus the same fixed costs. Those didn't change. They're fixed. That's why we broke the two out. That's going to give us our income, income before taxes, calculating the taxes on it. And then subtracting that out will give us our net income. So if we change it then to 35,000, same thing, which changes one item, it's going to change these automatically. These will change for us and that'll pull right through and adjust these items to get to our bottom line number. So that projection item is going to be very easy. We can see other types of projections that we might make. We might, we might have some adjustments we think are going to happen to the fixed costs. For example, if we say that we, we increase the advertising budget or something like that as a fixed cost, this could go up and we would have to adjust the fixed costs with relation to that static increase. And then th that could increase or decrease the estimated sales price. But just note how easy, how much easier it is to do this than if we had a normal type of income statement that we put into a budgeted type of format and then wanted to run a bunch of scenarios with it would be much more difficult given the nature of the expenses being mixed in many cases instead of broken out by behavior between the fixed and variable costs. Now we can consider this in terms of a worksheet that will just be uh, broken out in this format. We're gonna say, okay, here's the same idea. We've got the sales, we got the variable cost, we got the contribution margin. Let's just put the units up top now and we could just say, okay, here's the 208 sales times the 20,000 units gives us the 4,160. Here's the variable cost 148 times the 20,000 units gives us the 2,960. 2, and the contribution 60 times the 20, 1,200,000 or 4,160 minus the 2,960 is the 1,200,000. 
fixed costs remain the same and this all calculates out and we could put then well what would happen at 30,000 right next to it which would be the 208 times the 30,000 6,240 the 148 times the 30,000 4,440 60 times the 30,000 1 million eight or 6 million 240 minus the 4 440 1 million eight and so on and then we can say okay what would happen at 40,000 what would happen at 50,000 and we can break these out very easily and you can see how this type of setup can give us a nice uh, picture of how things could look in a forecasting type of perspective very quickly with very minimal uh, type of changes as opposed to of course once again a standard kind of income statement that we were going to budget forward given the fact that we're breaking this one out by behavior by the uh, how the costs act in terms of fixed or variable in nature.